What's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna be looking at and experimenting with HTMX. It's a small JavaScript library that allows us to create dynamic front ends without having to write any JavaScript at all. And we can do this by using special attributes in our HTML called hyperscript attributes. So we can basically make HTTP requests just by adding in a specific attribute. So if we look at the home page here, you can see that there's a button and there's an hx post attribute. So what this will do is it will make a post request to whatever this endpoint or this route is. And there's also hx get, put, patch, and delete. So as it says here under motivation, why should only get and post methods be available? So traditionally when you create a form and you submit to a server, you can only do method equals get or post, but with HTMX, you can use put, patch, delete. So that right there is very helpful. And then you can also make HTTP requests using any element, not just a tags and form tags like you can with you know regular HTML. And then you have methods, I'm sorry, attributes like HX swap, which will take the response, whatever this responds with, and it will swap this button for whatever that response includes. So you are pretty dependent on having a back end. This isn't something like Alpine JS where you want to use it just to have some, some little conditionals and loops in, within your HTML without writing JavaScript. Alpine's great for that, and you can actually use both of these together. This is more for full stack applications rather than you know small front end applications because you're always making a request to some kind of endpoint. Now, what we're going to do is use Node and Express on our back end, but it could be absolutely anything. In fact, HTMX is getting really popular with Django, so that's a, a real popular stack. It's also used a lot with Golang, but you could have anything as your, your back end. But like I said, we'll be using Node and Express. Now, HTMX is, is really small. It's only 14 kilobytes, so it's very, very lightweight. Um, so if you want to have some dynamic functionality and, you know, you want to easily make requests and replace certain parts of your application without having to make the page reload and you don't want to use, uh, you know, a front-end framework like React or uh, Vue, then it's a great option. So if we look under reference, you'll be able to see all the different attributes that are available. So HX get and post, those will make get and post requests. And then you also have your delete and your put and your patch. Um, HX swap, we looked at that. Now, uh, many times you might not want to just swap or replace the element that's making the request with the response, but you want to target somewhere else. So that's where you would use HX target. So you specify the target element to be swapped. And HX trigger is used to specify the event. So if you want it on a click or a mouse over, any event you can make, um, have it make an HTTP request. All right, now, instead of just kind of going through and explaining all these, what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple small projects where we're using HTMX uh, on our front end, and we'll have a simple Node.js and Express server on our back end. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so as I said, we're going to be using Node.js and Express as our back end. So we're going to just spend a couple minutes setting up a very basic server. We want to have a public directory where we can serve HTML files, and that's where our HTMX attributes will go. Okay, so if you, if you aren't familiar with Node, Node and Express, just kind of bear with me. We're just going to set this up really quick. So you do have to have Node.js installed. Um, go to nodejs.org, download it, install it, and you should have access to the node command. Okay, and I'm just using my integrated terminal here. So the first thing I'm going to do is generate a package.json. So we'll say npm init y, and that will create our package.json file. And as far as what I want to install as dependencies, we just want express. So npm install express. And then I also want to install as a dev dependency, so I'm going to use dash uppercase D, nodemon, just so we don't have to restart the server. It'll continuously watch our server file. All right, and then in the package.json, I'm just going to add a couple things here. I want to be able to use the 
um, ES module syntax, the import over the common JS require syntax. So I'm just going to add here type, and we're going to set that to module over common JS. And then we'll create a dev script that will run our server file, which we haven't created yet. It'll run it with nodemon. So let's say nodemon and then server.js. Okay, that should be all we need to do in here. Now let's create our server.js file. Okay, so this is just our the entry point to our back end. And what I'm going to do is just paste in some a couple lines of code here. Um, actually, we don't need XSS just yet. Um, so basically, we're just bringing in Express, we're initializing it into this app variable, and then we have a couple lines of middleware. So this will make it so the public folder that we create is static, and we can just serve HTML files from it. And then these two lines here are just middleware so that we can get data from um, either uh, JSON API clients or form bodies. And then here we're just starting the server, we're listening on port 3000. So we should be able to now run npm run dev since we created that script and you can see it's listening on port 3000. We haven't created any routes yet, so there's nothing to really to, to, to hit or go to, but our server is up and running. All right, so now let's create a folder called public and that's where, like I said, all of our HTML files will go. So I'm going to say index HTML. We'll just generate some HTML here for the title I'll say HTMX crash course and I'll just put an H1 in here and for now just say hello. All right, now since I made this public folder static, I should be able to go to my local host 3000 and see that index HTML file. So let's say local host uh, not 8000, we want 3000 and we see hello. Okay, now to get started using HTMX, there's a couple ways to do it. If we go to docs and then installing, so you can download it locally if you want and include it in your file structure. You can install it with NPM if you're using front end tooling or the easy way to do this, which is what we're doing is the CDN. So we just want to grab this script tag, put that in any HTML file where we want to use it. And then in addition to that, I just want to use um, Uh, tailwind so let's add that script tag as well so that's going to be source and https cdn dot tailwind css dot com okay and then if we look at the page now the font should change if i reload so now we know tailwind is included all right and i'm just going to make these smaller so we can see them both at the same time Now, the first thing that I want to do is, is basically just show you how we can have a button that will make a request and get that response and put it into the browser without writing any JavaScript, just by having a, a couple attributes. So in the body here, I'm just going to add a couple classes. I'm going to wrap this in text center, and then we'll just have an H1, and I'm going to add, let's say, text. These are just Tailwind classes, font bold. And let's do MY, so margin on the Y axis, 5. And I'm just going to say simple request example. Okay, and this is the code that will be in the final repo, so that's why I'm kind of setting it up like this. Now we're going to have a button, and let's just make it, we'll say BG blue, 500. Let's do text dash white, and padding Y, we'll do 2, and then padding X. We'll do three. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. And let's do MY5. We'll make it rounded, large, and that should do it. So in the button text, we'll just say fetch users because that's what we're going to be fetching. Okay, so if I save that and we reload, now we have this button. Obviously, this doesn't do anything at the moment, but what I want to do before we, we even interact with our, with our own server. I just want to show you an example where we could use a public API like JSON placeholder, which just will, allows you to fetch fake users, to do's, whatever you want. So on the button here, I'm going to create a get request, and I can do that with hx get. Okay, and then in here, I'm going to put the URL that I want to make that request to, which is going to be JSON 
placeholder dot typeycode.com slash users and that should give me an array of, of users. Um, now obviously you're probably not going to want to put that array directly in the body but I'm just giving you an example of making a request and doing something with it. Now in addition to the to the get requests we can do hx dash trigger and then specify the event when we want this to happen. In this case we want it to be a click. All right, so what I'm going to do is come over here, reload, click fetch users. And what happened is it made that request. It got the response, which is this JSON array, and it put it inside of the button. Okay, because we didn't specify any target or swap or anything like that. Now, the trigger, we don't even need this if, it's, if we want to click because that's the default for a button. However, if we wanted something different, like let's say... Um, mouse over and then if I reload and I could just mouse over the button it makes the request then so you're not bound to just certain events where you know to make requests and of course we're not writing any JavaScript now we don't, like I said if it's a click we don't need the trigger so I'm going to get rid of that and we could also use HX swap and what that'll do is it'll allow us to swap out the button for uh, for the response and again, this is a, uh, an array, right, a JSON array. Usually what you would get back from your server is markup. So you would replace it with like a, an HTML list of users, which I'm going to show you in a second. Um, now the swap, the swap can take in like outer HTML, inner HTML, uh, as well as some other selectors, but I'm going to do outer HTML. Now, if I click the button, you'll see the button goes away and the outer HTML is then replaced with whatever this responds with. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, I want to move on to actually having a list of users instead of uh, just an array. So we're not going to use this public API anymore. We're going to use our own. So let's replace that with, with just slash users. And since there's no domain name or anything, then it's going to look on our own server. So let's save that. If I click it, nothing happens. But if we look in the, the console here, you'll see it is making a request. It's just a 404 because this doesn't exist. So let's create that. So now I'm going to go to my back end to server.js. And I'm just going to put all my routes in this directly in this file. It's a little bit messy, but if you want, you can um, create separate route files if you know how to do that. So let's say we're going to handle, let's say handle get request uh, to fetch users. All right, so the way we do that is take our app variable and we want it to be a get request that we're handling. So dot get and then slash users. And what I'm going to do is just, uh, uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just do a, just a static array of users for now and then I'll show you how we can still get users from JSON placeholder, but make it a formatted list rather than sticking an array in. So we want our callback function here. Oops. And that's going to take in request and response objects. And for the users, we'll just say users set to that, set it to an array. And they're just going to have a name and an email. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, just a name, an ID and a name. So let's say ID, one, name, and then let's just copy that down a couple times. We'll say, let's say Bob Williams, change that to two, three, and then we'll do, let's say, Shannon Jackson. All right, so we have some users that I want to use in the list that we that we return from this uh, from this route. So we're going to take our response object here, which has a method called send. And then in here, we'll put some back ticks because we want this to be a template string. And then I'm just going to have an h1. I'm just going to give it a class of text dash 2xl. And let's do font dash bold. And we'll do margin uh, yeah, we'll do my4. All right, and we'll just say users. Okay, 
Now under that is where I want to have our UL. And we want to then loop through the users and output a list item for each one. So let's use our template literal syntax here, take our users, we're going to map through and say for each for each user, then we're going to return a list item. And inside that we'll have the user name. So let's say user dot name. Now this will be an array because we're taking an array and we're map we're using map. But to turn it to a string, all we have to do is add on dot join and just pass in an empty set of of single quotes. All right, so that should do it. Let's save that. And now when I come over here and I click, well, let's reload this click fetch users. Now, instead of just getting an array in the browser, we get a heading and we get our users in a in a list. And we happen to be using Node and Express, but you could do this with anything. Like I said, Django is pretty popular with HTMX. In our front end, of course, we have no JavaScript at all. We just added uh, a couple attributes. Now, the way we have it at the moment, we click the button and it replaces or it swaps with the response. But you probably want to put that somewhere else rather than replacing the button. And that's where target comes in or HX dash target. In fact, we can get rid of the swap and now say target. And you can put certain keywords in here. Like I could say this to mean this particular button or this element. I could do um, like next sibling, previous sibling, but you can also put just straight IDs and classes. So I'm going to say ID of users, which of course, then I have to create that. So let's go under the button here and let's create a div with the ID of users. Oops. Okay. So what should happen now is this is where the response should go. So let's reload and click the button. And now you can see it's put in that div. And then another thing you could do, this is, well, I'm not going to keep this, but just to show you that it exists, we have HX confirm. If you want to do a confirmation, we'll say, are you sure you want to fetch users? So if you're making like a delete request or something, this would be really helpful. And, and now you'll see if I click, I get that alert or that, that confirmation, but I'm not going to keep that. So let's get rid of that. Now, I know this is back end stuff, but I want to make it so that we instead of getting just this static array of users, we get it from JSON placeholder. So we'll comment out these users. And since I'm going to be making a fetch request and using a sync await, I'm just going to add a sync to this function. And then right above the send, we can just make our requests. So we'll say the response is going to go in this variable. We're going to await and fetch from HTTPS JSON placeholder uh, placeholder dot type code dot com slash users. Okay, then we just want to we'll say users set that to await and we want from that response, we want the JSON. And then here we don't have to change anything because we have our users now coming from there. We're going to loop through and output the names. So let's save that reload and click fetch users. And now you'll see we get I think it's the latest 10 users from the API. All right. Now I want to show you the HX indicator attribute, which allows you to have some kind of loading or some kind of spinner graphic or whatever you want while it's waiting for the server. So to do that, we'll go back into our HTML file and let's add another attribute of HX dash indicator. And what you'll do is set this to an element that you want to show when it's interacting with the server. So let's say an ID of loading. And of course, we need to create that so you can put that wherever you want it to display. I'm going to put it right above users. And it needs to be a span with the class of HTMX dash indicator. And then whatever the ID that you used in my case loading, and I could just have like that if I wanted, but I'm going to use a, an image, a GIF. So in public, I'm going to create an IMG folder and I'm just going to bring over the image, which you can get from the final repository if you want to use it. It's this loader.gif. So this right here, 
and then inside that span I'm going to have my image tag and I'm just going to add a class of M auto and H10 which will make it smaller and then the source will be IMG slash loader gif and we'll say loading all right so if I save that you can see it really quick but it's I mean the, obviously it's a quick server that it's local so what I'm going to do is just kind of mimic a slower server so here let's just use set timeout and just wait two seconds so I'm just going to wrap this code here we'll say set timeout and that takes in a function and it takes in um, however long you want to wait let's say 2000 milliseconds which is two seconds and in this function is where I'm going to put this okay this stuff so we'll cut that and we'll put it in here all right and then we're getting this error because since we're now using this callback we have to make this async now we'll reload and I'll click the button and now it's waiting two seconds and you can see it shows the indicator as it waits all right and again very very simple front-end code now there may be cases where you want to send data with your request and we can do that with HX vals so let's say we want to send a number for a limit that we want to set on the users maybe we want to set it to three or five so what we can do is add HX dash vals and we can set this I'm actually going to use single quotes here because in this object we need to wrap this in double quotes like a JSON object so I'm going to say limit and then set that to five all right now I can get this I can I'm sorry I can get this value by using this key with request.query dot limit or whatever this is so let's go back to uh, back to our back end and I'll put this right in the set timeout let's say const limit and we can get it with request.query dot limit I do want to make this a number so I'm just going to add a plus sign here because it's obviously it comes in as a string and I'm just going to say or 10 so if it doesn't ex if this doesn't exist then we'll make the default 10 and then with the JSON placeholder API you can add a query string of underscore limit and set it to what you want so I'm going to change these quotes to back ticks this one too let's change that to a back tick because I'm going to do question mark after users and then underscore limit and then I'm going to set that to whatever that limit is okay which I set it to what five so now when I come back over here and reload fetch users now I get five users if I change this to let's change it to three fetch users and now I get three because I'm sending this data to the back end through a simple attribute all right so I think that's all I want to do with this particular project so I do want to save this HTML so I'm going to just copy it and I'm going to create another folder in public and we'll call this request.html and this will all be in the the repo in the description but I'm going to paste that in and save it and now we can try something else so let's see I'll just get rid of everything in the body all right now what I'm going to do next is just create a very simple temperature um, converter where we can pass in a Fahrenheit temperature and it gives us Celsius back so basically we want a form um, event so when we submit the form it will go to the back end it'll do the calculation to get the temperature and then it'll send back some markup that will show us you know whatever is Fahrenheit equals whatever Celsius so I'm just going to paste in the HTML the body here um, there's no HTMX it's just the the interface which is very simple so I just added a gray body we have a container we have a card and an h1 and then a form with a single input which is um, Fahrenheit has the name of Fahrenheit all right so to make the request we're going to want to add onto the form this time not not a button so let's say hx dash trigger and we'll set that to submit which is actually the default so we don't we don't really need to add the trigger here but I'm just going to add it anyway now I want this to actually be a post request so instead of hx get I'm going to do hx post 
and let's say slash convert, which will be the route that we want to hit on our back end. And then where I want to put the response in the body, let's say target, HX, HX target, and I'll set that to an ID of result. Okay, so that's where we're going to put it. And then let's also do an indicator. So HX indicator, and I'll set that to an ID of loading again. All right, and then of course we need to have both of these divs. So let's go down here and we'll go right below the button. Let's do an ID of result. Uh, and then I'm going to do a class of MT6 and text dash XL. So that will be the result. We're not going to put anything in here because it'll get filled dynamically. And then let's do our indicator. So we'll have a class of HTMX dash indicator. And then let's do an ID of loading. And then again, I'm just going to use my image. Let's do um, margin auto and H dash 10. and image slash loading or loader dot gif. All right. So at the moment, if I click convert in 32, I just have that in here by default, but it's not showing anything, but it is making the request. So if we look down here, you can see every time I click it, it's making the request. We're just getting a 404 because it doesn't exist. So let's create that endpoint. We'll go in the back end here. And let's say handle post request for, uh, I guess, for temp conversion. So it's going to be a post request. So we want to do app dot post and the URL is going to be convert. And let's add request response. Now. I'm going to do the same thing with the set timeout just so we can see the um, the image, the the loader. So we'll say set timeout. Let's do have our function and then let's do two seconds here. So 2000 milliseconds. And then in here we're going to let's say Fahrenheit uh, Fahrenheit. I think that's how you spell it, right? Yeah, so Fahrenheit and then I'm going to parse this as a float. So let's say parse float. And in here to get the the data that's in here, in this case that 32, we can do that with request.body. and then whatever the name is, which is Fahrenheit. All right? If we look at the input, it has the name of Fahrenheit. And in order to get data from the body, you do have to have the middleware that I added earlier. So that'll get the Fahrenheit. Now for the Celsius, let's say cons Celsius and the conversion for that is going to be the Fahrenheit minus 32 and then that's going to be multiplied by 5 divided by 9. Oops, that should be slash. Okay, so that should give us the Celsius. Then what I want to send back, so let's say res dot send and I'm going to send back a uh, template string and let's put this in a paragraph. Okay, and then I'm just going to put the Fahrenheit. So we'll say Fahrenheit degrees uh Fahrenheit is equal to and then we'll have the Celsius value. Celsius and I'm just going to add two fixed with two decimal places. and then say degrees uh Celsius. All right, yeah, that should do it. So let's save that and then come over here, reload. I'm going to keep 32 in there. I click it, waits 2 seconds, and then we get 32 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 0 degrees Celsius. If I change that to let's say 50 then we get 50 degrees is equal to 10 degrees Celsius. All right. I guess we don't really need the the two fix. You can keep it if you want, but I think it looks kind of weird. So, we'll get rid of that. All right, cool. So, that's just another example. I and I figured I'd just show you guys that to show you uh using a, a different elements, so we're using a form with a different trigger and a post request over a get request. 
Now another thing we can do is polling. So this is where we can make a request to the server every so often to get updated data. So if we want to set it to every five seconds or every 30 seconds or whatever. So let me give you an example of that. Now I do want to save this. So I'm going to copy it and inside public, I'll create a new file here. I'll just call it uh, temp dot or temperature. We'll say temperature dot HTML paste that in, save it. And then in the index, I'm just going to uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll just get rid of everything in the body. And get rid of that class. Okay, so I'm going to give you a very simple example of polling to begin with. And then we'll do like a little weather app or a mock weather app that will fetch from the server every five seconds the weather so that it'll, it'll change automatically. But first we'll do just kind of like a simple counter example. So in body, let's create, let's just say text dash center. And I'm going to have a span here. Uh, I want to make this, I want to make a get request. So I'm going to use HX dash get and I'm going to set that to slash poll. Okay, that's the endpoint we're going to hit. And then for the trigger, this is how we can make it poll is we can say trigger, and I'm going to set it to every every 10 s. So every 10 actually, let's do five, make it a little shorter. So every five seconds. So basically, what will happen is it'll hit this slash poll every five seconds. And then it will replace whatever that response is into this span. Of course, we could put it wherever we want if we want to use a target or whatever. And I'm just going to say loading to begin with. All right, so now let's go to our server. And let's add, let's say, handle get requests for uh, polling example. So app dot get and slash poll. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to set I'm going to start off with just a counter variable, I'm going to put that outside of the route. So I'll say let counter set that to zero. And like I said, this server file is is kind of messy. If you want to split it up into separate files, you can do that. And then I'm going to take that counter in here and just increment it by one. And then so we're basically just simulating, you know, updated data. And then let's say const data and we'll send back just a, an object with a value of whatever that counter is. And then we can actually just res dot Jason. I mean, normally you wouldn't put Jason right in the browser, but it's just an example. So if we come over here and reload, we see loading. And in five seconds, it should make another request. So now we see value one. I know that's really small, hopefully. Hopefully you guys can see that, but um, whoops, why is there we go. So value three. So every time it hits the server, this counter is updating by one. So that's just a very uh, simple example of polling. Now let's make it a, a little cooler and, and create like a, a mini weather app. So what I'll do is we'll do the back end first. So let's say um, we'll say handle handle get requests for for weather. I don't know. Yeah, that's fine. So let's say app dot get and let's call this get dash temperature. All right. And then request response. And this is going to be very simple. I'm not going to actually reach out to a weather API, although you could if you wanted to, but I'm just going to generate a random Celsius temperature. So let's say current. Actually, I'm going to define this outside of this. So let current temperature set that to 20 by default. And then here we'll say current temperature and we'll add append. So plus equals math dot random and we're going to multiply that by two and minus one. So that will just be a random temp change. 
and then I'm just going to respond from this route. So res.send. And what I'm going to send is that current temperature value. I'm going to add two fix to add one decimal place. And then just concatenate on the Celsius. Uh, let me just grab the degrees symbol. I'm just going to add that on to the end of it. Now let's go to our index HTML. And instead of hitting poll, we're going to hit get temperature. And we'll, we'll stick to every five seconds. And I'm just going to make this look a little better. Let's add a couple classes. Uh, I'm just going to paste these classes in, actually. Okay, and then I'll just add a heading above the span. Let's do an H1. We'll say text-xl, margin bottom four. And we'll say weather in New York. And then I'm going to just wrap this down here in a paragraph. And let's do text-5xl, because I want that to be really big. So we'll move that span into the paragraph. All right, so let's reload. And now, look, weather in New York, it's loading. And in five seconds, let's see, something's going wrong here. Did I spell something wrong? Oh, I forgot my slash here. Let's try that. So reload. And five seconds. There we go. So 19.9 Celsius. And then in another five seconds, it'll check again. Now it's 20.7. So obviously this isn't the real weather. We're just simulating it. Uh, you could connect this to a weather API if you wanted to do that. And you'd have it, you know, updating in, in real time, basically. Okay, so that's polling. Now let's create a, a cool little search widget where we can search for users through an input, through a text field. And we'll have it fire off the request every time we, we push down a key. All right, so let's go into index.html. I'm just going to grab this here and we'll put this into, uh, I'll call this polling.html. Paste that in, save it. And then we can get rid of this stuff here. Um, I'm just going to keep the class of BG Blue 900. And I might as well just grab the HTML for this. And I'll just paste that into the body. Save that, reload. All right, so we just have this, this search interface. And let's just go over it real quick. So we just have a container. It kind of gave it a dark, dark mode look. Um, then we have the input, which I haven't done any HTMX attributes yet. We just have uh, type, name, um, table. So basically what we want to do is fill this table, fill the table body with the results. So you can see the table body has an ID of search results. So that should be our target. So let's go to the input. And let's see, we'll just add on under the placeholder here. I'm going to make this a post request. So we'll say HX post and we want it to go to slash search. And then let's add a trigger. So trigger. Now for this, I'm going to say trigger on input changed. And then you can also add a delay since we're doing it as we type. We might want to add a little delay. We can say 500 milliseconds and then add search. All right. So this should make a request every single time we we type something and then the target so hx target so this is where the, re the response will go and that's going to be the id of search results which we have below and then we'll go ahead and do an indicator on this as well so i'll set that to let's say loading and then i'll put the indicator here up top so let's go right under the container and we'll say span class htmx indicator and id of loading and then i'm just going to use my image so i'll give it a couple classes here img slash loader loading all right so yeah, I think that's really all we need for, for the front end. So you can see just how simple this is. If you were to do this with vanilla JavaScript, you'd have to select, you know, select the DOM elements and then add the event listener and then make the requests using fetch. 
this is very simple. So on the server side, um, we're going to go ahead and add the route for this. So let's say handle post request for user search. So it's a post request and it's going to be slash search and say request response. So as far as the the users, uh, well, I should say contacts, it's like a contacts thing. So we'll say for contact search, I'm going to just create an array of contacts. In fact, I'm going to paste it in just because it's I have quite a few here. And then I'll show you how we can refactor it to use JSON placeholder like we did with the other one. So we have these contacts. I'm going to get the, the text that's passed in here and call it search term. So let's say const search term. We can get that with request dot body dot and then search because that's what I called it. That's the name. And I'm just going to make it to lowercase. Okay, so that'll get the search term. Let's check to see if there's not a search term. So if there's not, then what I'm going to return is just going to be, um, let's say, res dot send. And I'm just going to return an empty table row, right? Because I don't want anything to show up if there's no search term. Otherwise, when we clear it, it'll show all the users, all the contacts. Then after that, let's perform a basic filter or basic search. So we'll say search results, and I'm going to set that to the contacts array, and then we're going to use the filter method. So here we'll say for each contact, let's say const name, and we can get that with contact.name, and I'm going to make it to lowercase, and then I'll do the same with email, because we want to be able to search the email as well. then what we can do is say return and just in parentheses here I'm going to say where the name includes the search term okay or let's say or the email includes the search term uh, yeah that should do it um, now I, I'm going to simulate a delay like I've been doing with set timeout. So under the search results, let's say set timeout. You don't have to do this. Uh, I just I like how it looks with the loader, but you don't have to do this. Um, let's do we'll do one second. So 1000. Now in the set timeout, I'm going to create another variable here called search results or search result HTML. And we're going to set that to our search results, which is an array. We're going to map through or loop through that with map and say for each contact, then let's return in backticks a table row. So we have our table row and then two columns. So we're going to have a TD, uh, TD and inside that. Uh, I want to add a little bit of space inside of the column. So I'm also going to have a div in here with my4 and padding2. And then inside that is where we're going to put the contact.name. Copy that down. And then we want the contact email. So for each contact, it should show the name here and the email here. All right. And since that's an array, we just want to add on to that. So onto this dot map. I'm going to say dot join, turn that to a string. And then finally, we want to send. So under that, let's say res dot send and we can send our search result HTML. All right, let's try it out. So if we look at our users, we have uh, John and Jane Doe. So if I put a J in here. OK, so something's going wrong. Let's see. Uh, request body search lowercase is not a function. Oh, this should be an uppercase C. 
Okay, so I'll type J. We see our spinner. And there we go. Now the spacing isn't showing for some reason. And that's because this should not be class name. We're not in React. And yeah, that should do it. So J. Yep. If I put an O after it, see it's going to make the request again and it comes back with just John Doe. All right. Now they all have example.com in the email. So if I do like EX, then we should get all of them. So it's a nice little, you know, real time search. Now, again, I know that this is going to be more back end, but I want to make it so we're searching the users of the JSON placeholder API. So I'm going to create a separate route for that. So I'll copy all this because it's going to be similar but I want to have both routes. So I'll paste that in and then just change it to handle post requests for contact search from uh, JSON placeholder. So I'm going to change the, the route here to sl search slash API. Now we want the search term, right? And then we want to check to see if there's no search term. And then above where we're getting the results and filtering them, we want to make the request. And we could actually just copy what, what we did up here. So just get the response, get the users. So now just put that here, except I'm going to change users. We'll call it contacts because that's what we ca called it down here. All right, so let's save that. And then let's go into our front end. And instead of slash search, it's going to be slash search slash API. So now if I reload that and I put an L in here, uh, let's see what's going on here. Did I not? Oh, limit is not defined. So we want to just take that out this right here. All right, that should work. Let's see L. Yep. So now it's getting all the anything that contains L. Let's pass in E. Okay, that narrows it down a that narrows it down to just Leanne. All right. So I do have some other projects. Um, I think maybe we can do one more. So let's do some inline validation. So we have a form where we want to validate and uh, we'll validate the email address to make sure it's formatted correctly and we'll show the message directly under that input. So let's go to index.html and I'm just going to copy everything from that file. It's in create a new file here. We'll call this one search.html. Paste all that in, save it. All right, so now we can get rid of everything in the body. Okay, get rid of the body class. Now again, I'm just going to grab the HTML for this and we'll go ahead and paste that in here. See what that looks like. All right, so just the basic form. And what I want to do is have it so as we're typing, it validates the email or not as we're typing, but as we click outside of it or into another field, it should say that email, uh, please enter a, a valid email or that email address is valid. Okay, so what you would normally do is have, you'd have like a, a HX post on the form for the submission, but I'm not really concerned with the submission. I want to make a separate request to validate the email address. Um, now we're doing that on the back end. And normally what you would probably do is check to see if that email exists in a database and then, you know, have, have it say that email already exists or whatever, but we don't have a database. So we're just going to do some uh, just a basic validation of an email. So let's add on to the input here. So this input with the name of email, I'm going to add HX dash post and set that to slash contact slash email because you might have the form actually submit to slash contact. This is separate. This is just for validation. Um, now, as far as you know where I want to put this, let's go to the div. Um, yeah, let's go to above the label, this div right here, and let's add onto this hx 
target and let's set that to this. So this element and then I want to swap. So HX dash swap and we'll set that to outer HTML. I think that should do it. So now if we just check it out, make sure that the request is being sent, right? If I reload this, click in here, I type something and then I click outside of it, then it's making that request. Okay, and obviously we haven't created it yet. We haven't created the route. So let's do that. We'll go to our back end here and let's add, let's say handle, uh, handle post request for email validation. So app.post and it's going to be slash contact slash email. So first thing I'm going to do is get the submitted email. So we'll call this submitted email and we'll set that to request dot body dot email. Okay, so that'll give us whatever is typed in. Then I want a regular expression to, to match against to make sure the email is valid. So I'm just going to paste that in. Definitely not typing out that regular expression, but it's just a simple expression that'll match a, a you know an email address. Then we'll have some messages that we want to send if it's valid or not. So let's say const is valid. And I'm actually going to set that to an object that has both a message and a class because I want it to be red if it's an error and green if it's not. So let's say message and we'll say that email is valid. And then we'll add a class of text dash green dash 700. And then for the, if it's not valid, then let's call this is invalid. And the message will say, let's say, please enter a valid email or email address. And we'll change the color to text red 700. All right, so we have our messages. Now we want to do the test. So let's say if so if not email, um, what did I call that? Email reg, regex. So if, regex. And then we can test that. So we can use the dot test method and pass in submitted email because that's what we want to test it against. So if that's true, then let's return res dot send and then some back ticks. Now, remember, we're replacing that whole div, right? Because this div right here is what I'm replacing and that's going to include everything in it. So let's grab that, right? So that ends right here. It includes the label and then includes the input. So I'm going to paste that in here. And then what do we want to change if it's valid? We're going to, first of all, add a, the value because we, we want the value to stay in the input. So on the input, let's do value. And we're going to set that to the submitted email. So let's say submitted email. And then underneath, let's see, we're going to go underneath the input. And that's where we'll have the message. So let's create a div. And I want that the class because remember, it's a it's a dynamic class. It'll either be red or green and we can get that by, let's say. Uh, is. So if it's not, so this is if it's not valid, so we want is invalid dot class and then inside here is where we'll have the is invalid dot message. Right. Because we're saying if it if it's not this, if it doesn't match. So then in the else, let's say else. So if it does match, we're going to do something very similar. So I'll just grab this whole thing and paste that in. And we're going to keep the value there and then just change this to is valid class. 
and then is valid message. All right, and that should do it. So now I'll go ahead and reload and I'm going to just type in test. And if I click outside of it, we get please enter a valid email address. If I do test at test dot com and I click outside of it, we get that email is valid. Okay, so it's just it's just inserting this block of code inside of this, the div, right, where we targeted it. And it's either going to be valid or not. Now, again, this is we're doing this on the back end. This would be common if you were checking to see if an email existed or not in the database. But like I said, we don't have a database. I mean, I guess we could have just mocked it, but this is fine as well. It's just the point is to show you how HTMX works, right? So again, no JavaScript at all here. And we're dynamically replacing parts of our page without having to reload it. That's the whole point of this. So again, you're very dependent on a back end. I know we wrote quite a bit of of server side JavaScript here, but we didn't write any at all in any of these HTML files on the front end. All right. So uh, I think that that's where I'm going to stop. I do have a couple other small projects. I'm going to include those in the repository. I think I have one or two other ones. One is like a mini profile that you can click to update. So you click it and then it's replaced with a form and then you can, you know, save your details. Um, and obviously in real life, you'd have that connected to a database. But hopefully this just gives you some insight onto some some of the reasons why you would use HTMX. Um, and uh, again, it's really popular with La uh, not Laravel, uh, Django, although you could use it with Laravel, of course, or, or anything at all. Um, but that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something from it. And I will see you in the next video.